So let's suppose I want to create a function f of x, which is x squared plus 4, and another function g of x that is x squared minus 2. So now I'm going to ask you um, which basic function was used? Which basic function I used to create f and g? Very good, of course. That's what it is. It's x squared. That's the core function used here. Next step, I'm going to graph x squared because I remember the shape. So please try to remember these sh shapes. Graph them with a calculator if you have any doubts or plot points, whatever you want. So this is x squared. Now, we're talking about shifts. The question is, what am I changing? And this I'm going to ask you for each transformation. What am I changing? So this function is f, f, x squared plus 4, and the basic function is x squared. So there are two options. You can either say I'm changing x, or you can say I'm changing y. If you say I'm changing x from here to create that function, then the shift will be on the horizontal axis, right, on the x-axis. If you say I'm changing y, then the shift will be on the y-axis. So what do you think are we changing? Are we changing x? No, I see x squared and I see x squared. There is no change in x. So x squared is this graph. What do you think will that be? Up four, very good. It's the same graph, but this will be x squared plus four. Up four units. It's a vertical shift, four units up. Excellent. What do you think the next one will be? Function g, x squared minus two. Of course. So down two will be this. So here's the graph of x squared minus two. So down two. And this is very clear. It's a vertical shift. The first one was vertical shift up four. The second one, vertical shift down two. So this was a vertical shift. OK, I'm going to use a different function now to illustrate the next transformation. So let's say f of x equals the square root of x minus 4, and g of x, the square root of x plus 2. First, I have to identify the base function that was used, or base or basic, whatever you want to call it. So what was the basic function used to determine or create f and g? Very good, the square root of x. Excellent. And now, the same question again. What am I changing? Am I changing x or am I changing y? How will this one look like with a change in y? It will be completely outside of the square root of x plus 2 or minus 5. Plus 2 will go up, move the graph up 2, and minus 5 will move the graph down 5. But this time, under the square root, instead of x, I have x minus 4. And under the square root, instead of x, I have x plus 2. So obviously, I am not changing y. I am changing x. However, we have to identify in which direction. For the vertical shift, it was quite easy. x squared plus 4, x squared minus 2. No problem there. Now, let's identify this because I don't want you to memorize it, right? So remember the graph of the square root of x. This is the graph of the square root of x. We have to memorize these graphs. And you can say, well, I'm in a test situation, I can plug, in them, plug them in the graphing calculus. True, you can. But then that will slow it down. So there are not a lot of graphs, and they're quite simple, I would say. OK, so what is the domain of this function? What do I have to write? So the domain would be 0. Exactly. So the domain is from 0 to infinity. Exactly. We cannot take the square root from numbers that are not 0 or positive. Perfect. Now, I would like you to identify the domain of this function. What will be the domain of this? So for the square root to exist, I had to write that the quantity under the square root is greater than or equal to 0. 
This is a new function. It's the square of x minus 4. Can anyone give us the quantity under the square root? Can anyone read the quantity under the square root for f? x minus 4. Good. Then x minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0. When I solve for x, I get x greater than or equal to 4. So now, since the domain of f is 4 to infinity, you will tell me exactly where that function is going versus the original function, the base function. Where does it go? Where does x is going to go? Right. It, was, it goes right 4, indeed. The domain is 4 to infinity. 4 to infinity, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 to infinity. The score of, that's the reason why we determine the domain for everyone to see where the function is going. And not memorize. Yes, I, I know you're going to ask, okay, so then I, when I change x into x minus 4, it goes to the right. Fine. You can remember it like that. That's okay. However, I didn't want you to memorize that. Okay, can anyone give us the first step of finding the domain of g? What will you write in order to find the domain of G? You will say, excellent. Excellent. So then the domain of G is greater than or equal to negative 2. Therefore, I know where this function is going versus the base function, not versus this. These are two different functions. So what kind of transformation is when I change x into x plus 2? Where does the graph go? In this case, horizontal um, shift, left how many? Exactly, that's it. So this is the square of x plus 2. So when we change x into x plus 2, the graph moves to your left. When we change x into x minus 4, the graph moves to your right. How many units? 4. Yes? Um, why are we going horizontal again? Because we're changing x. Every time we change x, we go horizontal. When we change y, we go up and down. See, see the comparison? x squared did not change. It's the change was outside of x. But here, I have the square of x instead of the square of x minus 4. Or I have x the square of x minus 4 instead of x. If this, the answer, if I had a function like this, then it would have been down 4. This does not touch x. Negative 4 does not touch x. It touches y. So when we change x, we go left and right. When we change y, we go up and down. That's why I will always ask you that question, and you should always ask yourself that question. What am I changing in order to identify? OK, now I would like to work on a combo. For example, f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 4. What is the base function or the basic function used here? It's absolute value. Awesome. So the basic function is the absolute value of x. But this time, the first transformation, remember, I should write it down. Transformations are presented in the order of operations. Transformations are presented in the order of operations. What does that mean? Here's what it means. If I ask you to evaluate this function for x equals 5, I'm asking you to find f of 5. What operation will you perform first? Will you add 4 or will you subtract 2? I know it's silly. What op which operation will you perform first? Left to right. You will subtract 2 first. You can't go to 4 before you subtract 2. So that's the first transformation we have to present. After you're calculating this, then you will add 4. And that's the second transformation we have to present. Am I making sense? Yes. That's how we, when we evaluate, right? If I say 5f of 4, you would put 4 in here, but will you add 4? No, you have to do 4 minus 2 first, and then you're adding 4. That's the correct sequence of operations, correct? Yeah. 
Good. So then the first transformation will be the absolute value of x minus 2. What type of transformation is it? Am I changing x? Am I changing y? Changing x. Good. And where does this graph go? To the right. how many? Two. Excellent. Very good. Second transformation is no longer on the base function. The second transformation is on function number one. So now what am I changing? Now am I, I'm comparing this to this. Am I changing x or am I changing y? Yes, because 4 is completely outside. It does not touch x, correct. So this is the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 4. What does transformation 2 do to, trans, to function 1? Exactly, that's it. Awesome. Let's graph this. We will be graphing three functions. We have to start with the base function or basic function, whatever you want to call it. Doesn't matter as long as you understand what I'm trying to do or say. So this is the base function, the absolute value. You told me to move it to the right two. I'm going to move it to the right two. Remember, it has to be parallel. Oops. So this is the absolute value of x minus 2. And then you told me to move this purple graph where? Excellent. I have a question. Please. Um, on a test, like, if we know to go to the right 4 and then up, or to the right 2 and then up 4, can we just do that, or do you want us to show the transformation? Um, it depends on the, what the, on the requirement. It's a very good question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, it depends on the question. The question may say, present all transformations. Or in the question may say, list the transformations, but only present the final answer. It depends. Okay. In this particular case, we did both. Okay. We listed the transformations. We explained what they meant. And then we graphed one, two, three functions to illustrate step by step what happened. So we're done with the shifts. Next step, reflections. Reflections. And then we're going to look at word problems because I, I'm sure you want to see how we apply all this. And I do too. Okay, so let's suppose we have f of x, the square root of negative x, and g of x, negative the square root of x. So the first question is, of course, what is the base function that I used to graph this? Of course, the base function or basic function is the square root of x. Perfect. My next question would be, after I identify the function that it was used, then I ask myself what? Where we change. Exactly. So I know if the transformation is doing this to the base function, or it does, it does something vertical. That's the key. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you. So now I'm looking, I'm looking at the under the square root, and I see x in the base function or basic function, and now I see negative x. So what am I changing? Okay. Obviously, I'm changing x. So now let's think. If I have x equals 5, what do I do to it to get negative x? Flip it around. Right. So what kind of reflection will this be? That's it. So this is the square root of x. We graphed it so already three times. And the other one will be this, the square root of negative x. So when we change x into negative x, what happens with respect to the y-axis? x into negative x, reflection, or reflect, reflect with respect to, you know, lazy people write WRT, yes, reflect with respect to the y-axis. 
Yes. questions here? Very good point, thank you. Other questions here? Okay, so when we change x into negative x, remember x into negative x or x into negative x, it doesn't matter, right? We can go from left to right or from right to left. It's a reflection with respect to the y-axis. Very good, we go back. Now for the second function, I have the square of x. I have the square root of x. This one has what sign in front? Yes, if I don't put anything, the sign is positive. And this one has what sign in front? So I have to identify what type of transformation is. Is it a transformation on x or is it a transformation on y? It is a transformation on y. As you see, x is not touched by anything. It's the same square root of x, the same square root of x. But now, this one had a positive in front and this one has a negative in front. So. If somebody has positive in front, it's a y value. We're not changing x, right? We established that. If something has a positive sign in front, it's here. If it has a negative sign in front, it would be down. If it has a negative sign and I put a negative in front, it would reflect so it's just from negative down. to positive or from positive to negative. And this would then go from positive to negative. This would go from positive to negative. So, this is the graph that we are reflecting, but now it's this, negative the square root of x. So, when we change y into negative y, what do we do to the graph, the basic function, or the function from before, whatever that was? Reflect with respect to, very good, reflect with respect to, the x-axis. Okay, let's illustrate the combo with everything we've, we've looked at so far. Ready? Okay, so let's say <clears throat> f of x equals negative the absolute value of x plus 2 and minus 4. Transformations have to be presented in the order of, trans of operations. So if I want to evaluate this function for 15, I would have to calculate 15 plus 2 first. I'm done with that. I would have to multiply by negative 1 as the second step. Mm -hmm. And as the final step, I would have to subtract 4. This is the correct order of operations. This is the correct order of transformations as well. One more time. If I want to evaluate for 3, first I perform 3 plus 2. I'm done with that. I find the absolute value, of course. Then I multiply by negative 1, I'm done with that, and then I add or subtract 4 in this case. So, first transformation, please. Oh, I'm sorry, what is the base function? Uh, the absolute value of x. Good. So now you already see the pattern. You already anticipate my questions. That's awesome. So number one, first transformation, please. Um, Bless you. So the absolute value of x plus 2, left 2. Transformation 2 is on function 1. What do I do now? So from the absolute value of x to the absolute value of x plus 2, obviously I change to which variable? X. X, from x to x plus 2. Perfect. But now I have to multiply by negative 1. Negative 1 does not touch x. I'm not changing c x plus 2 is x plus 2. I'm not changing x. It's the same x plus 2. So the negative sign is outside, which means what am I changing now? The y. So if I'm changing the y with minus in front, what am I really doing? Reflect with respect to the x-axis. Finally, 
In transformation three, I have negative the absolute value of x plus two and minus four. What am I doing to, prop to function two now? Obviously, I'm not changing x. It's the same thing. Same function, but then minus four outside. And minus four does not, does not touch x. So what am I doing to this function by subtracting 4? Down 4. We are changing y. That's why at every step, maybe at first it could be confusing, but every step you always should always ask yourself, what am I changing? Am I changing x or am I changing y? So I, so I can identify it correctly. So down 4. See, that's why I emphasized this, there is no change here. This is the same, so it's down 4. So let's graph this time 1, 2, 3, 4 functions. We start with the absolute value of x. And here it is. We already graphed this like four times. So this is the absolute value of x. Then you told me to shift it to the left 2. We're shifting it to the left, too. And this is the absolute value of x plus 2. Now, you understand that these graphs are not meant like in your, book, in your book. I disagree with that. They're not meant to be exact. They're meant to give us a quick shape. They're not meant to be accurate, 100% in points and stuff. No. They're only meant to give us the idea of what's behind it. OK, so we graph the second one. And then um, you said to reflect. Okay, I'm going to reflect this particular one. Here it is. I'm reflecting it. So this is negative the absolute value of x plus 2. And finally you said that I had to move this where? Down four. Perfect. So 1, 2, 3, 4, down 4. This is the final graph. Negative the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 4. So now, quickly, I can identify this is not a perfect graph. It's not an accurate graph. Can you identify the range for this? For the final one? Of course. Please. Oh, no, I have a question. Please. So, so like on a test, if you're graphing this, will you only switch the graph the final one, not all of it? All of them, depending on what the problem is asking. Okay. It may be asking list and just present the last one on the graph, or list them and present all transformations. Okay. It depends on what the problem is asking them. So can we identify the range for the final graph only? Negative four to negative infinity. Careful. We always read from below to so above. Negative infinity to negative four. Perfect. So the range is indeed negative, oops. Please do not ever use, for I, um, by mistake, I. Put a bracket. Do not put a bracket at infinities. <laughs> Only parentheses. Good. Very good. The last set. Oh, actually, we have two more. Okay. Vertical. Shrinking. Horizontal. Oh, yes. Because the point exists, it's not open. Okay. So vertical shrinking um, and stretching. I'm going to erase this one. We have two more, but I promise to move this one to the next test because we have enough material. Very good. Vertical stretching or shrinking. So let's illustrate this. Let's say f of x, 2x squared, and g of x, 1 third x squared. Which base function did I use to create these two? Very good, which is a quadratic, a parabola, in other words. Very good. So base function x squared. 
Again, we have to establish what are we changing. If we're changing x, then we have to look at left, right. Or who knows, some transformation on the horizontal, in the horizontal direction, in other words, horizontally. But if we're changing y, then we have to think about something happening uh, vertically. So I look at x squared, and I look at x squared. Am I changing x? Am I changing x? Yes. One more time. I'm looking at x squared, and I'm looking at x squared. Am I changing x? OK, let's go back. I'm looking at x, and I'm looking at x plus 2. Am I changing x, or I'm changing y? Good. One more time. I'm looking at x squared, and I'm looking at x squared. Am I changing x? No, I am not changing x. So this is completely correct. Okay. See, I'm looking at x squared, and I'm looking at x squared. So if you're going to abstract the graph as a whole, not, not a y component or an x component. Exactly. Okay. That's true. That's absolutely correct. However, I have to identify what kind of transformation is it. Because if I'm changing x, it's going to be this. If right. I'm changing y, it's going to be this. OK, so which way? That's why I have to identify what, the transfer, what am I changing. One more time. Am I changing x squared? No. no. Am I changing x squared? No. no. But this one had a 1 in front, and this one has a 2 in front. So the change will be vertical. Either doing this, in other words, from this, this, or from this, this. This one is called vertical stretching, and the other one is vertical shrinking of the graph. Vertical stretching and vertical shrinking of the graph. So when we graph x squared, we will be graphing this. What do you think will happen when we multiply all y values by 2? Yes, I have to multiply by 2. What will happen now? So this y value multiplied by 2 will do this, right? Say it again. It's going to be, no, not out. So when, let's, let's, exactly. So let's illustrate with the point. So let's say for this function, when x is 2, how much is y for this function? Four. Very good. Now let's identify for this function, like we did with the shifts. For x equals 2, what will this function be? Eight. Correct. So obviously, from 4, it changes into 8. So the transformation does this. So this is twice x squared which is a vertical stretching of the graph. So for the same x equals 2, this one was 4, but this one is 8. So x squared, 2 times x squared. What do you think will happen for the other one? All y values will be divided by 3. Exactly. So this is one-third x squared. Obviously, the last transformation will be similar, but on the x-axis. But don't, you don't have to bother with that right now. OK, ready? Yes, I, haven't, I, I have to write it, too. So uh, changing. Y into 2Y, what does it do? Vertical stretching, obviously by a factor of 2. Changing Y into 1 third Y, what will that do? Yes, vertical shrinking. Let's look at the combo. And then we will choose problems from your book. Ready? Let's say we have f of x. 
negative 2, the absolute value of x minus 3, plus 4. This time, I want to add another question. So here, is, here are the requirements for this. Number one, find x and y intercepts algebraically find the x and y intercepts algebraically and question number two graph using transformations graph using transformations Ready? Good, so let's answer the first question first. How do I find the x-and-y-intercepts for any function? Let's say the x-intercept first. Perfect. The x-intercept requires y equals 0. Perfect. So I replace f of x by 0, because it's y. 0 equals negative 2 x minus 3 plus 4. Because I'm sure you were asking yourself, well, okay, she taught us how to solve absolute value equations. What for? Here's an example. Here's an application. Okay, so how do I solve this equation? What type of equation is it? In absolute value. Of course. Once I say absolute value, it has to be absolute value. Good. So. Okay. Awesome. Do you mind if I put this to the other side instead of moving four? Same thing. Very good. Same thing. It's the same thing. You don't well, have to change it. Correct. Correct. That's why. Very good. Now what? Very good. So the absolute value of x minus 3 equals 2. And now I have to dig deep. Remember, we know how many, how many different we have. We listed them. How many? There were eight. Eight different equations different types of equations. Okay, what do I do now? How do I think about it? X minus 3 equals negative 2. Excellent. Thank you, Brianna. Awesome. That's it. So then the first one is gives us x equals... Very good. And the other one gives us x equals? Excellent. Thank you, Tiffany. Great job. OK. So I found the x-intercepts. Now, can anyone give them to us in an ordered pair format? Because that's what I'm going to plot. I'm not going to plot 1 or 5. One, zero. That's it. Five, zero. Thank you. Perfect. OK. Now I want to find the y-intercept. How do I find the y-intercept for any function, including this one? Excellent. Very good. So I'm happy with whoever inv invented this is, was a smart man, <laughs> woman, whatever. OK, so uh, indeed, x equals 0. Let's do this together, please. 0 minus 3. Negative three. The absolute negative value of negative 3. 3 times negative 2. Negative 6 plus two, 4. That's it. Can anyone give us the y-intercept in an ordered pair format? Perfect. We completed, we completed part one of the question. Now we are asked to <laughs> graph using transformations. Let's identify the base function. What was the base function that I used to create this. Excellent. Thank you. Cool. Excellent. Good. Uh, first transformation, please. In order of operations, analyze the function and say, OK, if I'm asked to evaluate for 15, what operation will I perform first? And that will be the first transformation. Fifteen minus three. Yeah. Perfect. So then the first one will be um, x minus 3. What transformation is the absolute value of x minus 3 on x? 
three. Right, three. Very good. We go back to the function. Now you could say, and I would have to agree with you, you will say, okay, you plug in whatever, you apply the absolute value, and then you multiply by negative two, right? In this case, when we present transformations, we have to do it in two steps. First, we multiply by two, and then we multiply by negative one. Or first, we multiply by negative one, and then multiply by two. I have to separate into two steps because there are two transformations hidden in there. Does it matter which order you do this? No. Two times three is three times two, so no. So what I would do, I would reflect first. Yeah. And then stretch. So I recommend as step number two here is negative the absolute value of x minus three, which is a reflection. Reflect with respect to the x-axis. We are multiplying outside. Oh, because you're it doesn't touch y, x. So we it doesn't touch x, it touches the function outside. Good. And then number three is negative 2x minus 3. Always note that number 1 is a transformation on the base. Number 2 is a transformation on 1. Number 3 is a transformation on 2. So what did I do to graph 2 to get transformation 3? Yes, because it was this way and then reflected, but now I multiply by 2 it will stretch the graph by a factor of two. So it's a vertical stretch. Stretch by a factor of two. Final transformation. Can anyone give us the final transformation? After I'm done with the absolute value of x minus three times negative one times positive two and then plus four. What am I doing now? Yes, but what type of transformation will that be? And remember, transformation 4 is on, on function 3. Up 4, indeed. Up 4. OK, so let's graph. I have to present five functions. First, the absolute value. Here it is. It's the absolute value. It's not a good color. Too light. No one can see. Good. Then you told me write three. Fine. The absolute value of x minus three. Then you told me to reflect this. Fine, I will. Negative the absolute value of x minus 3. Then you told me to stretch it by a factor of 2. Negative 2, the absolute value of x minus 3. And then you told me to move it up. 4. Fine. So this is the final graph. And now the moment of truth. Is my graph close? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Does it cross the x-axis in 1, 5? No. I missed it. It should have been here. 3, 4, 5, maybe that's OK. And 0, negative 2. I grossly missed it. But that's my point. I need the shape. I want the sh I have the shape. That's all I care about. Now I can make the adjustment. I'm not going to cross out. I'm not going to erase anything there. Since I know now, where is this point? It's at, it's at 3, comma 4. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. It crosses at 1 and negative 2, 4, 5. Because now I can make my correction. This is the correct graph, and it's negative 2, x minus 3, plus 4.
So transformations are not supposed to be accurate, are not supposed to take a lot of time. They're supposed to just give us a shape, boom, 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 quickly. But yes, once I have and I determine, that's why I asked to determine the x and y intercepts first, is to show that there is no way when I graph transformations, the point is just to come up with a shape. It's not to create...